Halo Dokter Lee. Kenapa bunga jadi pagi? Selamat pagi. Hai, good morning. Ah, maaf. Ah, hari ini ya lambat sikit. <laughs> Halo, good okay. morning Dokter Lee. How are you doing good today? Oh, huh, sibuk hari ini. Hari ini um, Easy. Hectic sikit hari ini. Lambat <laughs> sikit. Selamat pagi. Oke, sorry Dr. Lee. Uh, Ibu Alini ada di sini? Sudah ada ah. Ibu Alini atau Ibu Putri Eka? Ya saya Bu, ini ya, masih bimbingan ya. mahasiswa ke klinik. Oh, Oke okay, ya. Yeah. Klinik jiwa. Ya yeah, baik. Uh, baik kita mulai uh, guest lecture hari ini. Kita kembali lagi uh, bersama Dr. Lee Wan Ling dari Nursing Department Faculty of Medicine University of Malaya. Pada kesempatan ini Dr. Lee akan menjelaskan tentang Uh, care of patients with bronchial asthma or COPD, right? Uh, hari ini kita sudah ada sudah hadir bersama kita 95 orang mahasiswa, Dr. Lee, dari um, beberapa semester di um, Prodi S1 Keperawatan. Baik, agar tidak uh, memperpanjang waktu dan Dr. Lee juga bisa uh, selesai tepat waktu, because I know you are very busy, Uh, let's not uh, waste any time anymore. Now the stage is yours, Dr. Lee. Silahkan langsung, uh, Dr. Lee. Terima kasih, Ibu Nila. Selamat ya, selamat. ini memang musim keras, so uh, hectic sikit lah hari ini. Okay, tak apa. Uh, selamat pagi semua uh, kepada ibu-ibu dan anak-anak sekalian. Ya. Okay, kita berjumpa kembali semalam. Uh, kita ada satu sesi tentang perawatan pesakit dengan jantung koronari. Uh, hari ini kita akan... Uh, Uh, melihat pula perawatan pesakit dengan respiratory. So, I will share my screen. Salah, ya. Boleh dengar dekat sana? Clear? Dengar. Ini gelap sikit ya, sebab saya menghadap uh, posisi lain. So, gambar saya nampak gelap. <laughs> no, no, it's bright here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alright, just give me a moment. I share the screen. Okay. So, uh, Uh, I think this lecture will be much lighter compared to the previous lecture. Previous lecture tu agak berat. Eh? So today I'm just going to uh, simplify it and then make it a bit light, digestible for 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 anak-anak semua. Okay. Now uh, basically, uh, yeah. Uh, Usually, you know, a lecturer that teach jantung, they are expected to cover scare respiratory because uh, jantung respiratory, they're very much interconnected, you know, in terms of functions and physiological functions. Eh? So today, uh, um, I'm just going to focus two main uh, respiratory uh, disease that is paling prevalent, eh? paling, paling banyak sekali eh? uh, worldwide, eh? the most prevalent eh? uh, globally. Okay, number one will be bronco asthma. Number two will be obs chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or short form kita katakan COPD lah. Hmm. Uh, okay, uh, here I share with you some, you know, uh, this, you know, this, this, this two diseases uh, is actually very rampant worldwide, you know. That's why all these uh, international, uh, should I say, organization, the professional organization, the doctors, and as I say, come together to come up with this international guideline. And this international guideline will be adopted by each country. Yeah, so uh, for the interest of the audience, uh, you, can, uh, you can go and visit. Yeah? 
uh, these guidelines, you know, uh, I will share the link. If you click, uh, well, I will give you a slide. When you click on the link here, you'll be able to go to this website, right? Um, area is where it has uh, international guideline about uh, allergy because what happened is they found that uh, people that has allergy rhinitis uh, allergy rhinitis they seem to be associated with asthma whether they're not sure it is the causative but they found that yeah, many of patients with asthma also have uh, this allergic rhinitis. So that's why they feel that if you can manage this rhinitis, eh, no runny nose, eh, actually, uh, if you can manage this condition, it, the, the asthma control will be better. Now, but I will definitely uh, recommend you to go for the GINA guideline. It stands for the Global Initiative for Asthma. You can go there, it has a lot of resources. Now, when we teach, uh, sometimes we have to update it. Okay? As the year goes by, they have up, they have all the newer versions. Now, sometimes uh, I always prefer you to give you the link so you can uh, go and check out the latest guideline. So Gina guideline, Gina guideline is actually for asthma, and the last one would be the GOAL. GOAL stands for Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease. Yeah? Uh, sometimes they COLD, COPD. So these are the terms that you find people has been synonymously using. Huh? So this are, uh, these are definitely, I highly recommend to um, to all the pengajar-pengajar, all the lecturer-lecturer yang will take up these subjects. Huh? Okay. Uh, and then they have, you can see they have many, many resources. Sometimes they have nice slides that you can also adopt for the teaching. Okay, here I talk about, you know, um, the actual cost for asthma as well as COPD, the exact cost, they cannot determine for sure, but they are able to identify what are the trigger factors. So you will find that the terms, uh, asthma, they, they use the term trigger factors, <laughs> okay? They also mean risk factor, yeah? Uh, trigger factors because uh, they find that in asthma, right, when they are exposed to all these elements, they will precipitate, okay, symptoms. Now, if they are not exposed to all these elements, they will be asymptomatic. They don't precipitate the symptoms. Yeah? Uh, the pet of, uh, I'll talk about the pathophysiology of it later. Now, the common one will be tengok lah, uh, makanan certain, um, I mean, each individual or pe uh, person with asthma, they have different, different triggers, you know, but generally, most of them will be sensitive to all this, yeah? Uh, feathers, animal furs, okay, the bunga, pollens, okay, dust mite, uh, dust mite, dust, smokes, extreme temperature, you know, from too cold suddenly go to too hot or too hot suddenly come to too cold, uh, sudden change of extreme temperature, emotion, yeah, be less stressed too, huh? <laughs> like student that gets stressed, ah. Uh, Asthma attack pun datang lah. Oh my goodness, yeah. So sometimes some of them lah, but not all. Some of them uh, uh, extreme uh, stre uh, uh, stress, yeah. When they stress, sometimes exercise, like extreme exercise. Certain people they you know dulu tak pernah jogging, jarang jogging. Tiba-tiba dia nak jadi uh, uh, marathon runner. You know, extreme exercise, sudden extreme exercise are that trigger. Okay, that's why I told them uh, for patients with asthma, we don't, uh, uh, the exercise is actually very good for them. If you can remember the Olympic, uh, the medal Olympians, uh, the swimmers is actually an asthma patient. No? So the body has to be conditioned slowly. Dia tak boleh tiba-tiba je, bidang terjun, you know, for, tak pernah exercise punya orang tiba-tiba jadi uh, a triathlon ke, apa marathon ke. Okay, that's not, not good. Eh? Body, body dia akan terkejut, ya. Yeah? Uh, so these are the uh, trigger factors. So we like to deal with this uh, person. We always try to identify. Okay, we try to do a little bit of like a penyasatan investigation, eh? like a detective, eh? ask a lot of questions. We try to identify uh, apa sebenarnya yang trigger dia punya symptom asthma ni. Yeah. Uh, so the next one uh, will be the COPD. Now COPD ni uh, very classical. Very classical. You will find that typical lah smoking memang number one. Eh? Smoking, okay? 
So you will find that very typical for those who smokes. And these are the these are the bad news lah for smokers. Ah, uh, eventually, you know, majority the big bulk majority of them will develop COPD. Okay, some of them ah uh, they get lung cancer first before COPD. Okay, some of them will develop COPD. Yeah. Ah, uh, of course there is also a gene factors, right? But this one is jarang lah. Okay, uh, for Asian people, you know, some people, uh, some people have a ge genetic fact, uh, defect where they do not have uh, sufficient of this alpha one antitrypsins. They are more uh, they are a little bit common among uh, the Caucasian, okay, the Western people, the Caucasian. Asian people, jarang, you hardly find. But most of the time, either smoking or occupational hazard. Daripada pekerjaan dia ke, daripada environment dia, dia hidu banyaknya bahan-bahan uh, 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 yang toxic kepada paru-paru dia. Yeah. And of course, on top of that, aging population. So they smoke and they age. So eventually, they, they develop COPD. So you find that most COPD, you don't see in that young age. They normally see that in the old age. Right. Um, this one is the uh, uh, asthma attack. Okay. Now, asthma patients, yeah, they are very normal. No? You, tell, you, you know, you look at them, uh, you tak tahu pun orang ni uh, ada penyakit asthma. It's so normal. Yeah. The only thing is when they have attack. So what happened is during attack. Ah. Uh, so the whole idea is we do not want them to have attack. The attack could be mild, could be moderate, and could be severe. Well, what happened during the attack is that uh, the airway is become inflamed. Yeah. Okay, this is a normal airway. All right. Ini yang bronchial, yeah. Right. And the alveoli is here. So this is a normal. This is a small, tiny uh, 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 bronchial. All right. So what happened is uh, because of the trigger factors. Remember the trigger factors. Uh, contoh dia uh, bila jelebu. Okay. Bila jelebu. Eh, there's one time uh, we are kita diselebungi dengan jelebu. Ah, uh, okay. You will see a lot of these patients will come with asthma attack. So what happened is the uh, the 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 airway become meradang, inflamed, bengkak. Bila bengkak tu, kamu tengok ah, uh, uh, the lumen yang besar ni dia jadi kecil, okay? And it become worsen when the otot-otot ni dia constrict. So bronchial constriction happens. So otot-otot di sini akan constrict, mengecut. Lepas tu uh, the mucosa bengkak, okay? Bengkak. Then on top of that, sel-sel uh, glob global di sini juga menghasilkan uh, sekresi, ya, yeah? right? Extra mucus. So combination of all these strings, yeah, bronchoconstrictions, mucus edema, and uh, uh, secret, uh, mucus secretions, dia menyebabkan penyumbatan yang kritikal pada lumen bronchial ini. So that's why you find that that is where the patient will develop all the, you know, the difficulty in breathing, the, yeah, the, 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 the chest tightness. You know why chest tightness? Because you see, when uh, if you notice, bila kita tarik nafas, is actually active, but hembus nafas is actually passive. Yeah. So there's a, sometimes they find a lot of air trapping because they because sumbat kan, so they have to really breathe out hard. Yeah, they feel chest tightness because of air trap in the alveoli, and then uh, they have wheezing sound. Okay, bunyi macam umpama YouTube kalau YouTube dalam slow yang kecil tu, that kind of wheezing sounds. Yeah. Wheezing sound is actually good sign lah, in a way during attack because wheezing sound is masih ada lagi udara uh, pass through the bronchial. You know, there is still air in out to the bronchial. But bila you auscultate, you tak dengar apa-apa pun, that is problematic. Meaning that is occlusion. Kalau silent chest, oh my goodness, get ready lah to intubate patient. Yeah? Because silent chest meaning that there is no air going in and going out. Yeah? So basically, these are the things. That's what happened to asthma. So this is transient. So we can reverse this. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, I put it. Uh, I put it this sort of diagram to explain how you can figure out okay the clinical manifestation of the patient during asthma attack. Yeah. Kalau tak ada asthma attack, you don't see this actually. Yeah. So when there is presence, ah, bila dengan kehadirannya risk factors or something they call trigger factors, okay, it triggers the airway become hyperresponsive. So in other words, uh, airway ini, okay, when I talk about airway, I'm, re I'm referring to the bronchioles, you know, the tiny bronchioles. So the airway ini actually uh, sensitive, okay, sensitive. Itinya bila 
bila expose so the trigger factor dia overreact hyper responsive so dia 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 ada dia, now there is a very is a, the whole cellular mechanism is very complex kita tak payahlah to know all that detail but all we need to know is just like macam uh, konsep dia sama dengan macam kita ada alahan bila kita makan sesuatu alahan apa berlaku badan kita akan trigger inflammatory uh, keluarlah semua ruam-ruam yang mulut bengkak kan i think some of you have allergy ya eh? you will understand so it's a certain things um, similar concept so when the airway is uh, sort of exposed to the trigger factors so airway become alah you know allergy so hyper responsive so they 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 they, they, they sort of uh, started all the inflammatory cellular inflammatory processes and the end product is it become inflamed meradang ya yeah? so dalam keadaan keradangan ini you will find that the mucosa okay the, the mucosa will be bengkak you will find that the otot-otot ya yeah, licin yang mengelilingi bronkiol yang saya tunjukkan tadi mengecil bronchoconstriction then you you will see that a cell goblet okay dalam dalam bronkiol itu akan menghasilkan banyaknya mucus ya yeah? so so you will find that kalau banyak mucus very natural bila ada banyak mucus terhasil it is very normal the body will try to expel the mucus so you mulalah batuk so the batuk is actually a mechanism of the badan to expel mucus yang berlebihan because the mucus is i mean a, 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 a little bit amount of mucus is okay it's like a lubricant but bila a lot it become problematic because uh, terlalu banyak mucus ni dia menjadi tempat pembiakan kuman uh, too much mucus menjadi tempat pembiakan kuman be, so that will be very bad that's why our body has a tendency kalau we produce so much mu, uh, mucus we will tend to cough to expel out the uh, mucus that's why suppressing cough is not a good thing actually so sometimes jangan panik ya if anak-anak cough ke apa sometimes a cough Uh, it's, a, it's a sign that the body is expelling too much mucus. But of course, the problem is, uh, ramai orang tengok bila batuk tu kan mula panik. Ya? Eh, kata lemak. Okay? Right. So the only thing is, uh, cough during night will be problematic because cough during night, uh, the person cannot sleep. So the sleep quality will be affected. So that's why we normally serve all this cough mixture, cough suppressant for on, waktu tidur je. Siang hari, biarlah dia batuk, biar dia keluarkan semua kahak-kahak. Okay? it should be the way it is lah right uh, so only, only we give cough mixture when they need to sleep and only when they think is the cough is giving them some sort of pain then we will give them a lower dose just to reduce the cough right other than that you see a combination of all these things if you go out the picture here when you look at a combination of bronchoconstriction the inflammations and the uh, over secretion you'll find that Okay, lumen menjadi sangat sempit. Okay, so when you have a uh, uh, airway yang lumen yang sempit tu, maka udara yang keluar masuk bronkial akan terhad. So that's why you have shortness of breath, you have wheezing. Yeah, uh, that is a typical. You will see uh, uh, your uh, the person will be having difficulty breathing. We call it asthma attack. Huh? Then and 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 it become more narrow and more narrow. Semakin narrow. Uh, you will see the air trap kat your view line. Yeah, air trap. That's why you rasa chest tightness. Yeah. You find that the person need to breathe, work hard to breathe out. Like for us, kita tak payah breathe out because breathing out, okay, hembus nafas, it's a passive. And you don't need to do anything. It's just passive. But during the attack, you have to work hard to breathe out. Work hard to breathe. Mm -hmm. You have to breathe fast, okay, to compensate for the hypoxemia. And you have to breathe hard. Breathe hard to breathe. Uh, breathe hard to breathe the air out to exhale. Yeah. Right, and then as if we don't intervene, the thing will get worse. The hypoxemia will get worse. Yeah, because of normal gas exchange. Oh. Okay. Uh, next, we will talk about COPD. Yeah. So this is typical COPD. Now, the spec, the clinical manifestations uh, to the clinical manifestation or the clinical presentation of patient with CPD. You will find some people are classical bronchitis on uh, chronic bronchitis. These are the people uh, you will find that they are the uh, lalunya uh, kahak sangat banyak. 
Saatnya pun Iya kan Kahat dia sangat banyak, you know. Ah, uh, ini dia, dia selalunya this are the, the one that we call the blue bloaters. Yeah? And then the some the other side, you know, they come with uh, sembab air, they have right heart failure. Yeah? And then the other spectrum will be empyzema. These are the people that shushi kulu kulu, pink puff. Okay, they 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 breathe very fast, but they are very pink looking. Okay? And then there are some people in between. Okay, neither here, neither there. So, uh. So you, you you find it very difficult, you know, to to able to distinguish which one is chronic bronchitis, which one is emphysema, because the spectrum is so wide. But anyway, hallmark COPD is basically number one would be chronic cough, okay, chronic productive cough. That's a hallmark, yeah. Okay, right. So uh, this is basically the. Uh, that the physiology to development of COPD. So the presence of risk factor, there must be a risk factor. Smoking, for instance, eh? smoke over many, many years. So what happened? Every time smoke, they damage the ciliaries of the airway. Yeah? So, you know, the ciliary is actually, you know, the one that you the move to move out all the mucus. Okay? Right? You, if, you, if you don't realize, every day the ciliary, you know, we, uh, will be moving in and out to bring out all the mucus. Out, yeah. Uh, then uh, uh, also, what happened is when they smoke, they trigger all the cells uh, to undergo some kind of inflammatory responses. So this one, after many many years, they develop chronic okay, inflammatory response. Right. So what happened is the airway become, you know, it's just like a concept, like uh, bila kita bila kita let's say potong tangan kita berdarah, lepas tu sembuh balik kan. Lepas tu potong lagi, berdarah, sembuh balik. Potong lagi, berdarah, sembuh balik. So every time smoke, it's like that lah. Every time we smoke, we we, we actually cause injury to the airway. And then when, after that, after that, that repeated injury will cause the airway to change the lip uh, because of the repeated inflammation. So final result will be the airway fibrosis. Okay, uh, fibrosis artinya uh, pembentukan tissue paru. Yeah, airway fibrosis. Airway is the bronchial, right? Uh, due to the airway inflammations and the airway remodeling. Remodeling is a is a it's a complex process that where the cells has uh, changes. Yeah, so it won't be a normal healthy cell. So cells has sort of like uh, changes into uh, cells paru. Yeah. Then, of course, there will be a destruction of alveoli. Not only the bronchial will be uh, damaged, okay? The alveoli also will be damaged, yeah? All right. So maybe I show this picture to see a better picture. Do I have that? Oh, tak ada, yeah? Okay, so the alveoli will be affected, okay? Kamu tengok alveoli. So what happened is the inflammation process also will cause the alveoli membrane to break down. So yang cantik cantik macam grip ni dah menjadi. So so uh, dia akan hilang. So when the damage the 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 gas exchange surface, the alveolar surface. So a lot of them in damage. So you have less surface for gas exchange because gas exchange actually happen at alveoli, right? So you see like that. So can you imagine? Uh, it will be less because damage. So all the air will come in here. Okay, the air will be coming here, right? And then you have less gas, a uh, less, less surface for gas exchange. Okay, sakit gigi lah. <laughs> okay, all right. And then um, it also what happened? It was cause air trapping. Now, uh, this picture just to explain to you. Um, normally, bila kita tarik nafas, air go in, the air will akan mengembang. Macam uh, belut, dia mengembang. Then after that. Automatically, they akan menguncuk, recoil balik. Because uh, if you have elasticity, eh, it will recoil back. When it recoil back, the air will go out. That's normal. But when there is a damage of alveoli, so and then there's a fibrosis here, okay? When you have fibrosis, I think yeah, if you heard the word fibrosis, it's talking about uh, parut, lah. Okay? tissue parut. So the air got, goes in. So, and then it doesn't recoil back. It doesn't recoil back. 
So the air got trapped here. Uh, okay, so you find that's why uh, this patient has to breathe hard also. Okay, uh, to exhale dia punya nafas. But you will see that too much of uh, too much of air trapping, it will cause it will flatten the diaphragm. Yeah, and it will cause the lung to be hyperinflated. Okay, this are them. That's why you will see patients COPD ni. They are the macam. If you look at the chest, uh, they have the, the the chest, the the anterior and posterior diameter will be much larger. Sometimes you hear the term, the punya chest macam tong, barrel chest, eh, macam tong. Okay, you can see this picture. I'll leave it to you. Uh, you will see that kadang uh, COPD ni kalau tengok gambar dari jauh, you nampak. Basically, kamu tengok dia are dependent on oxygen. This are actually mostly refer to those yang agak advanced COPD. Advanced COPD, they will be dependent on uh, oxygen, right? That's right, so far. Okay, dependent on oxygen. And then um, you will find that they have a lot of mucus. Sampai dia kena send by tissue ni. Ha, ni smoker ni, tinya this, ini. Tengok, some patients COPD pun masih tak berhenti merokok lagi ni. Oh my goodness, yeah, okay. And you will see that they will have a typical, you see the barrel chest. Okay, they have a barrel chest. These are, these are you can only see this picture in advance. I think it's agak, agak, agak teruk dan COPD dia. Then you will see the, the finger clubbing because of chronic hypoxemia. And then, and then because of chronic hypoxemia also, they develop a right heart failure, which is known as a core pulmonary. And they are very, uh, they are very thin. They are malnourished because of, of, of the, uh, systemic inflammatory. So, COPD is very complex. So, um, uh, for your level, we will look into the basic of a COPD. Yeah? Asthma ni kamu tengok dia lebih muda because that's why you will see sometimes you have a childhood asthma. Right? They, are tend to, they tend to be younger people and then you will find that they are basically oh, uh, need to use inhaler. Yeah? Tantang what to attack actually. Right, and so what to attack aja, barulah dia ada symptom. Other than that, dia dah okay. Right, so this is a picture. You can see, I mean, this picture will be able to help you to bezakan antara pesakit COPD dengan pesakit asthma. But, even though mereka ada perbezaan, mereka juga ada persamaan dia dari segi masalah, okay, masalah dia. Let's look at the next slide. Follow now. Apa saya tak mau jalan ni? Sekejap ya. Jam lah, komputer sekejap ya. Cuci, cuci. Cuci. Sekejap ya, kenapa jam komputer? Okey. Ah, dari tipikal lah. Teknologi bagus, tapi bila ada hiccup macam ni, ah, dia kacau. Alright. Okay. Let me share back. Ah, tu kacau betul. Mm -hmm. Nampak ya? Sekejap. Mana pergi ya? Baik. Hari ini betul-betul dia lembab. Okay. Let me see. Okay. Right. So, uh, gambar tadi menunjukkan perbezaan antara pesakit COPD dengan asthma. Right. You will see that they typically asthma are younger general, are younger people. COPD are basically, you know, older people. The trigger factors tend to be different. Asthma, the trigger factor is because of allergy to all these things. But COPD is mainly because of smoking. Yeah. And then, by however, okay, caring for them more or less the same. All right. Now, usually, uh, a patient with COPD, the patient dengan asthma ni, dia duduk kat rumah, happy go lucky. Right. Okay. 
you don't see them ah uh, 24 jam ke hospital sebenarnya they are in the community they live their normal life they have a good quality of life okay if they know how to manage their condition so the hallmark to successful management of this condition is actually patient punya self management patient must have their own ability yes uh, to manage them and then it is our role to help them to have the ability to self manage their condition The only problem arises is bila berlakunya acute exacerbation. Acute exacerbation dalam bahasa dalam bahasa Malaysia aku tak tahu apa lah. Acute exacerbation. Nah, kalau kalau doktor semua cakap acute exacerbation lah. Acute exacerbation is where there is uh, satu keadaan um, acute, ya, yeah? keradangannya acute. Now, only when they have acute exacerbation, they they will come to the Uh, hospital they will come to the emergency unit they will come to the clinic yeah they they will ask for pump yeah? because you will find asthma patient during acute exacerbation yeah? they find they ambil pump pun it doesn't seem to help then they will come to you yeah artinya dia mendapat serangan lah kenapa agaknya ada dapat serangan lah I mean, okay, okay, my my happy go lucky. Tiba tiba dapat serangan. And then some serangan sampai kena masuk hospital. Ah, kenapa agaknya? Ya? What is the most common causes? Okay, what is the most common causes that 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 that, that, that lead to this uh, acute exacerbation? Okay. All right. If you uh, you can go to the ward and then you can look at the patient history. Pura tu lah. Okay. Two third of the cases is because of respiratory infection. Any for respiratory infections. Macam kita yang sihat ni, sikit sikit flu okay. We overcome it very fast kan. Sikit sikit flu is no problem. But for this kind of patient, sikit sikit flu akan menyebabkan masalah besar. Okay, so that's why you find that most of them, if you ask them, ah, uh, they will come to you. Yes, before that, I'm having a bit runny nose. I'm having sore throat. I'm having uh, all these symptoms of respiratory infection. So bear in mind, respiratory infection is the most common cause that menyebabkan the hospital. So they have to be admitted. Yeah. Okay. So that is oh my internet is not stable. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, doctor. Oh, okay. All right. My internet dia meragam pula. Hari ni agaknya saya bangun bangun daripada katil sebelah yang salah agaknya ya. Yeah? <laughs> Everything seems to go a bit uh, challenging. Okay. Because of acute exacerbation that's where uh, I'm focus on hospital nursing ya. Yeah? because uh, care of patient in the clinic will be slightly different compared to care of patient in the hospital okay so care of patient in the clinic is a lot of health education you know teaching guiding but care of patient in the hospital will be different it's about like a resuscitation yeah uh, mini resuscitation now most of the time they will come to you number one when they find they cannot tahan uh, kesesakan nafas they are bothered by the uh, difficulty in breathing so they come to you yeah they come to you they look uh, the second one will be anxiety yeah uh, because you know we can we can you know we 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 constantly need to breathe yeah we can live without food and water but we cannot survive at all for not breathing yeah now so problem number one now this is again that we uh, like in uh, in our setting kita menggunakan pendekatan proses kejerawatan ya yeah? okay so number one problem will be dipsia dipsia is a medical term for kesukaran bernafas why is it kesukaran bernafas because of this lah okay uh, contributing uh, uh, dia because of this uh, pathophysiology lah the airway narrowing the mucus plugging Yeah, yeah, and then why are the airway uh, dengan dengan pros? Uh, sorry, uh, kenapa ada airway narrowing dengan mucus plugging is because of respiratory infection actually, yeah, secondary respiratory infection. So basically, this is the main problem. Yeah, they come to you, they have problems with breathing. So what we normally do is 
kita ada sasaran dia, target. So, uh, we have a immediate target kita, expected outcome. Uh. So, we will target that within four, first to four hours after started treatment. Yeah. So, doctor will start treatment bagi nebulizer lah, okay, bagi hydrocord lah, so whatever the treatment. Yeah, you will, you will expect, you should expect okay, the patient to tell you, okay, I, have, I can breathe better. I have reductions of shortness of breath. Because not, if not, you know, after given yeah, second nebulizer, breathing macam tu juga, tercungak-cungak, oh, this is not a good sign. Yeah. Better stand by lah, risa slowly, yeah, because patient can collapse anytime. Right, achieve, then we expect them to achieve SPO2. This is saturation oxygen. Okay. Uh, I hope adik-adik tahu tentang pulse oximeter. Ada sejenis alat yang kita pasang kat, kita kepikkan alat tu kat, 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 kat jejari untuk mendapatkan bacaan paras oksigen. Okay. So, we expecting more than 95% for asthma patient. Lah. For COPD patient ni, uh, if we can get 90 to 93, it's okay. Alright, this uh, because uh, satu satu lecture lain pula nak cerita pasal hypoxic drive ni, eh. okay, that would be a bit complex. But bearing in mind, uh, some COPD, COPD patient, dia telah pun badan dia telah biasa dengan uh, badan dia telah biasa dengan paras oksigen yang agak kurang sedikit. Uh, it's normal for them because it's it's over the years, you see. So if you have a pass oximeter, give you a reading between 1993, jangan panic for COPD patient ya. Yeah? But for asthma patient, for normal patient, uh, 1993 no good, no good, no good at all. Huh? Okay, not not happy. Okay. Right, reduce work of breathing. So you find that patient uh, cara dia bernafas tu will be much better. Dia tak you 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 nampak dia macam taklah bekerja keras untuk bernafas eh? and less less labor less labor breathing lah. So you will find that dia punya respiration rate will be coming down to 50 to 20 25 uh, uh, breath per minute. Okay, they use less of accessory muscles yeah. Okay, and then of course Kalau kita ambil dia punya darah for yeah, arterial blood gases, you expect that PO2 will be more than 60, okay, with no rising trends of PCO2. Okay. Alright, ini semua bacaan-bacaan yang kita dapati daripada arterial blood gas results. So that's why it's very normal for them during that time, we will tend to at least dapatkan satu bacaan arterial blood gas. Then of course, the pulse will be less than 100 yeah, with normal strength. So inilah sasaran kita. So sometimes we, we must be observant. We must be know where the patient respond to treatment well or not. And start the treatment, we should monitor because doctor will be very busy you know, treating other patient. It is us. Lepas dia dah bagi ubat, okay? lepas tu dia tinggalkan patient. And they tinggalkan patient for us to monitor. So these are the knowledge that we can save patient. So that kita jangan tunggu patient collapse. Now, when the patient collapses, it's, 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 it's because kita uh, kurang peka tau, to pick up early sign. Yeah? Okay, alright. So, nursing intervention. Obviously, yeah, bila dia susah bernafas, very standard, nah, we will prop them up. Faulus position adalah keadaan yang duduk menegak. Okay, it could be on bed. Yeah? And you find that the patient naturally also uh, uh, will prefer this kind of position. Because dalam keadaan kedudukan yang tegak ni, it allows the lung to expand yeah and 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 diaphragm dia tak uh, the diaphragm tidaklah menekan yeah oleh uh, abdominal organ bila kita baring you find the abdominal organ akan macam menekan pada diaphragm tu so bila dalam keadaan duduk ni ruang thoracic uh, lebih luas dia me, me, apa me enhance lung expansion alamat saya ni bahasa tongan langgang ya <laughs> akan saya ya Alright, tak tak begitu arif sangat lah dengan bahasa Melayu ni, okay? Alright, so basically that's number one. Eh? So this is, you know, ada ini kan langkah-langkah ni can apply to any patient that come to you with difficulty in breathing. If they come to you lah tak kisah lah apa condition ya. Eh? Kalau they have difficulty in breathing, first thing you do, prop them up, okay? Don't let them jalan-jalan, okay? CRIB complete rest in bed, no go to toilet-toilet semua. Okay, eh, then give them oxygen. I no need to wait for doctor to give oxygen. You can give oxygen lah. Because sometimes uh, I think alama jurawat nak bagi oksigen pun kena tunggu doktor. Oh my goodness, yeah. Give them. Okay, give them oxygen. 
And you can start off with, uh, normally, uh, you will see that kalau patient breathing through, eh, bila dia bernafas, you tengok tak? Adakah dia bernafas uh, menggunakan mulut? Nah, if they menggunakan mulut, then give them a face mask. Okay? Uh, because kalau dia bernafas menggunakan mulut, you bagi nasal prong yang 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 kat hidung saja, it might not be that effective. Okay? So give them a simple face mask. Sim we normally start with simple face mask. Right? I hope that you know all this lah. If you're not, you can you can you can check it out with your lecturer. Yeah. We normally start up with maybe low dose six to eight. Okay. Now you go below six, uh, it will be like giving nothing to patient. You know, because it's setiap uh setiap device ni they have to have a minimum uh, oxygen flow to deliver a minimum FiO two. Right. Then uh, so okay. So, kalau for COPD patients, later on we will change every simple face mask, later on we will change to venturi mask to give a more control oxygen level. Okay. Okay. So, that's it. Standard, yeah. Standard. Any patient come to you, kalau with SOB, okay, severe, uh, uh, shall I say, um, uh, respiratory distress, you can, you can apply that. Now, next thing is, okay, get the doctor quickly set up the IV cannula. Because why? You may not know, you know, when patient come to you, whether they are candidate to collapse. Eh? Bila dia call, kalau patient dah collapse, baru nak cari salur darah. Oh my goodness, oh the salur darah dah collapse. Oh, susah nak cari. Okay, so quickly, okay, get an IV cannula. Ask the doctor to set the IV cannula, stand by. Especially when resuscitation, very useful, you know. When resuscitation, you ada IV cannula in situ, you shoot aja ubat kat sana. Yeah? Then, you, then, of course, you give medication. Okay, I remember this medications, uh, if you go back here, all right, if you look at here, so you will find that, okay, kalau lah, kalau lah kerana penyempitan seluruh darah, you need to open it up with bronchodilator, so you bagilah bronchodilator agent, so you akan okay, me, me, merelaksasikan, okay, uh, otot-otot licin pada bronchio ini, and then bengkakkan kerana inflammation, so you need uh, anti-inflammatory drugs. So anti-inflammatory drugs and bronchodilatation would be the hallmark. And of course, hypoxemia, you need oxygen. Okay. So this are okay, this is how you can figure out lah, what kind of treatment is expected of patients yeah, based on the pathophysiology. So you will know that we have a short acting beta agonist. Yeah? Uh, balik buku pharmacology like that. Uh, then we sometimes to have a better uh, now. Uh, better synergy effect, we add on anticholinergic. Okay, anticholinergic ini uh, dia menyebabkan uh, dia akan prevent spasms of the uh, otot licin bronco tersebut. Ya, yeah? uh, this uh, beta agonist ni akan menyebabkan relaksasi of the otot licin pada bronco tersebut. And uh, normally we will give them through uh, oxygen driven nebulizer. You know, there's two type of, you know, uh, if you pass ada satu yang alat tu kan tak menggunakan oxygen, ya, that is called compressor nebulizer. Okay. Right. Satu alat yang menggunakan oxygen. Okay. So, normally we will, for asthma patient especially, we will give oxygen driven nebulizer because bila kita bagi ubat, kita also bagi oxygen. Compressor nebulizer ni, usually tak ada oxygen yang diberi. So, uh, this, this are normally we, we will we will normally give it for patients uh, who is a COPD patient, okay? Who who can tolerate compressor nebulizer, okay? Meaning that they can they can live without oxygen for a short while. Then we can we can give them compressor nebulizer. But if a patient that is hypoxic, throat hypoxic, yeah, uh, consider given, uh, consider using oxygen driven nebulizer. Okay. Now that you will find that the doctors will also give some sort of anti-inflammatory drugs to glucocorticosteroids like prednisolone, hydrocort, yeah, untuk mengurangkan uh, airway inflammation. Yeah. And very typical, you said that I, I mentioned before, the most common the reason why they dapat serangan acute exacerbation is because of respiratory infection. So you ambil history, you can suspect them they have some form of respiratory infection. So you so most of the time the doctor will very common you will see doctor prescribe antibiotics yeah to treat respiratory infection. Okay, now you start all that treatment. We just need to monitor. Okay, what you should see is give me SpO two. Okay, we should be monitor continuously. Pakai pulse oximeter. You count count one full rate yeah count na. Okay, jangan shock shock ah yeah jangan jangan uh, saya guna kaisilah catologi main cat cat aja tapi tak tak kira. 
Respiratory count is very important, yeah. And then note the pulse, look at the BP trend. Sometimes the doctor might order ECG. Sometimes the doctor, will, um, most of the time, you'll find at least two ABG. Lah. And sometimes you'll see the doctor will order more than one ABG to see the patient's progression. Yeah? And then this is a peak respiratory flow rate, peak flow. Okay? Uh, satu alat yang, di, satu alat yang digunakan untuk hembus nafas. Uh, if you're not sure what peak flow, you can get back to the lecturer what's the meaning of the peak flow meters. Right, we will we will get uh, we will see how how good they can how much they can exhale. They punya udara keluar. Now they have to take a deep breath and exhale as strong uh, as much as possible. Okay, and then it will tells you you know uh, uh, how much penyempitan berlaku pada salu udara dia. Yeah? So sometimes you will very typical. Okay, we will take one big flow before kita bagi nebulizer and after kita bagi nebulizer. Uh, very standard. We want to see the efficacies of the of the uh, drug therapy. And then we think out the when you cough, okay? Tell the patient this cough, don't keep the cough, all right? And then we observe the sputums. Right? I uh, this uh, this I always tell my student to to report if this if if these are the symptoms that you observe, sign and symptom you observe in patient because these are the patients Sorry, these are the signs and symptoms that show a patient can collapse, right? Nah, so again, now sometimes you find that some patient, uh, patient, uh, I mean, doctor can electively, you know, they plan. Oh, yo, this one look no, look no good, uh. They were electively plan to intubate patient, yeah, uh, because you find you know, actually banyak nak cerita ni, eh? but to because of time constraint. Uh, let me share with you that if you see a uh, patient become agitated, restless, right? They, they, because of hypoxia of the brain, the, the first early sign is actually agitated, okay? Sometimes you can understand the patient who has a lot of you say a lot of things, complain, complain, lah, all this thing, agitated, tak boleh duduk diam, lah, okay? Make, uh, make your punya task, uh, uh, more difficult, asyik panggil you, lah, asyik picik korbel, lah, agitated lah, or restless, lah. So you understand, you probably not because okay, the brain hypoxia. But kalau kita tak pick up, okay, agitated restless ni, kita masih buat yang tak endah. Oops. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yes, me. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, Okay. Kalau lah patient agitated and restless ni, you you ambil tak endah, then tiba-tiba you tengok, eh, daripada meragam, tiba-tiba baik je perangai dia. Okay. They become drowsy, they look, you know, they look like sleeping. You better watch out, uh, that might not be a good sign. It might be meaning dia punya respiratory failure is pending, you know, pending. Artinya they're about to fail in their respiratory status, yeah. And when they become confused, oh, that is even bad, right? Okay. So watch out, okay? So the mental state is a very sensitive indicators to the oxygen level in our body, yeah? The next thing is respiratory rate. Initially, they breathe fast. Okay, they're breathing more than 30 minutes because it's very normal, you know, when you are when the body is hypoxia, the composition mechanism, this is a survival mode. Okay, the person will breathe fast. They breathe fast, okay, tachypnea, so that they can breathe in more oxygen. So you find that they have very fast respiratory rate, RR is respiratory rate, yeah? okay? But then, they still okay, but watch out, you have to come, you know, when they become less than, uh, 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 when they become too fast, okay, and then suddenly become too slow, then you better watch out, okay? The problem is, can you imagine that if you're breathing uh, so fast uh, for four or five hours, what do you think will happen to the patient? You, you know, all the respiratory uh, muscles, huh? the respiratory muscle will eventually get tired. Patient can get tired of breathing. They become fatigued. And when they become fatigued, they don't, they, the, the, the accessory muscles, you know, become tired. So they're no longer breathing fast. They, so they, they slow down their breathing. When they slow down their breathing, the CO2 is climbing up. Ah. So that is a pending of respiratory failure, okay? So, yeah, watch out, yeah, watch out. So those who, that's why sometimes, uh, 
kita kena observe tau. Even patient breathing more than 30 minutes, uh, satu, uh, for more than 6-7 hours, uh, it's not a good sign. Okay, more than, yeah, breathing more than 30 per minute, uh, for 6-7 hours, uh, you have to al alarm the doctors. Sometimes, uh, if you work in emergency, uh, if you take the history, uh, they said, uh, oh, they are susah nafas uh, daripada malam tadi, uh, tak nak datang ke hospital. Okay? Uh, uh, because takut, eh, takut datang hospital. Takut hospital, nanti takut nak kena cocok, takut nak masuk ward. Macam-macam alasan lah. So, uh, can you imagine they're breathing fast? Daripada malam, they come to you pagi-pagi. Can you imagine they are very tired of breathing already? So, when they're tired of breathing, so they slow down their breathing, it's like CO2 climbing high sky, you will see they collapse in front of you. Okay? All right. Another one, when they come to you, they cannot even talk. So, sometimes, uh, bila you tanya dia, you observe, are they able to complete question? Um, uh, sorry, are they able to complete dia punya ayat? Macam saya, tak ada satu nafas, cakap non-stop dalam satu nafas. Artinya saya punya uh, respiratory status is very good lah. Nah, Kadang-kadang you tengok ada orang yang mungkin dia terpaksa berhenti-henti. Okay? Uh, habis uh, habis ber berapa patah perkataan, stop sekejap, ambil nafas, sama melik. Uh, so you will find that this uh, the typical way, you know, I mean, this is a typical presentation that patient having difficulty in breathing. ya. Yeah? Uh, the worst part is, kalau dia tak boleh cakap, they cannot talk. When you ask them question, dia angguk-angguk, they can't talk. Uh, that is not a good sign. That is a sign of pending respiratory failure. So, as a nurse, so we must be able to detect okay, pending respiratory failure. Okay? And then poor respiratory efforts, tachycardia, pulse narrowing, pulse pressure. As I said, don't wait until the BP drops. Because when the BP drops, hypotension is actually late stage. Yeah? Then SpO2, okay? Less than 95, you need to be alert, okay? Low PO2, rising PCO2, okay? Hypercapnia is rising PCO2 lah, okay? Low PO2 is hypoxemia, right? And then the peak flow, when you do peak flow, they are, they are able to blow, tak boleh blow, or they are close, they punya bacaan very low, 150 saja, saja. Now, if you see, respiratory failure ni, stand by lah, okay? Stand by lah for elective intubation. Okay. Uh, ataupun well, sometimes kita menggunakan uh, non-invasive ventilation. Have you heard of BiPAP? You know, dia uh, bernafas menggunakan mesin tapi dia tak adalah intubate. Ya? Dia menggunakan satu mask yang kedap udara sambung kepada mesin to help them to breathe. Okay. Sometimes you, we will have patient to be put on that. Right. So these are the simple nursing measures, but extremely important. So you know that this most of the time, kebanyakan this patient during during serangan acute, during exacerbation, they have a lot of secretion. So bring out the secretion, okay? Remove it, okay? So that the secretion doesn't menyumbatkan salur udara dia. So what? So sometimes you will find that certain hospital, you will find that we will give uh, saline and bronchodilator uh, nebulizer, okay? So because you see that that uh, if you give and nebulizer, kita masukkan apa? Normal saline, kita camp ada campuran normal saline kan? Normal saline, sebutamol dengan ipa, uh, dengan anticholinergic like ipatro. Have this all these combinations, you know? Maybe one one one, two two one, or, or two two two. So sometimes the doctor will prescribe lah. So when you give nebulizer, it also bronchodilate as well as liquefy secretion. Okay? So that secretion menjadi lebih cair, lebih lah di, uh, lebih mudah di batuk keluar. Okay, so cara batuk pun ada cara dia lah. I think you have learned before how is the concept similar to a uh, macam post-op coughing lah. Okay, cough effectively, right? Sometimes you might need to perform suctioning, especially for those with poor coughing effort. Uh, uh, especially those warga emas, eh, they have, might have poor coughing effort. You can boleh dengar, tak boleh tahan lah. Bunyi keluar aku muka kat belakang tekak tu, oh my goodness ya. Yeah. Simpan kahak kat sana, oh my goodness. Then you tanyalah, boleh tak bantu minta sedutan sedikit. Ya? Okay, something you need to do suctioning. Then uh, keep them uh, adequately hydrate. It cukup. Because if a patient is dehydrated, dia punya sekresi lebih pekat, lekit. Lagi susahlah dia untuk uh, uh, expel out the mucus. At the same time, when you know when they breathe through mouth, you know that when you breathe through mouth, you losing a lot of vapor. Lah. Ya, dia, lepas tu dia berpeluh-peluh lagi, masa di dalam keadaan distress, dia pun berpeluh-peluh. So, they're losing a lot of water. And then having fever too at that time. So, keep an eye, make sure patient hydrated. 
Yeah. Sometimes patient tak, you know, sometimes I tengok ah, kat work tu patient, just because patient diam-diam, okay, uh, kita, uh, dia tak ada kacau kita, tak ada minta air. It is our job yeah, to offer them drinks. Okay, you dah tengok. That's why we have to monitor patient. Not. Dah dua jam kan, ah, offer dia. Okay, you need to drink. Please drink. Okay. Some patient, yeah, they, they concentrate. They concentrate on surviving and yeah, they forgot to drink. Okay. Right. So, have enough drinks. It's important. Hydration. Yeah, but bearing in mind, some patients, especially coming with right failure, they might have some uh, limited, uh, fluid uh, limits. Yeah. Now, next, promote rest. Lah. So, this is the patient you need to have rest. Uh, kalau lah, eh, satu kampung datang melawat, eh, kita dengan komat, kita bagi tahu to restrict visitor. Because, dia dah lah nak tercungak-cungak, bernafas, satu persatu asyik datang, tanya apa khabar, apa berlaku, dia jadi take recorder, repeat again and again and again, actually no good. Yeah? Uh, tapi, kadang-kadang, uh, I mean, especially, I mean, uh, okay, uh, Selalunya warga-warga satu kampung tu dia dia very close you know. Bila somebody datang sakit juga dia akan datang. Because they really genuinely concerned. But sometimes dia, dia tak faham. Kenapa kejamnya jurawat tak kasih melawat sakit ya. So you need to explain that. This is where you have to practice you punya PR skill. Let's explain to the patient the reason why. Okay. And then kalau kalau you benarkan let's say uh, seseorang sometimes say you allow a carer to uh, let's say sit with the patient ya yeah? right because especially those what yang uh, ramai patient jurawat eh, ratio jurawat dengan pesakit selalu tinggi so uh, sometimes uh, you will find that patients will sit by the I'm sorry the the carer will sit by the patients yeah? so you have to tell the carer okay, don't talk to the patient let the patient sleep and let them conserve the energy to breathe Of course, help them to breathe com comfortably eh, dengan memberi pakaian yang selesa. Okay? Tidak ada pakaian yang sendat-sendat. Okay? Men menyukarkan pernafasan dia. Make sure the environment is well ventilated. ya. Yeah? Okay? Free from irritants. Yeah? Tak adalah buruk. That's why uh, it's not good practice about bunga ke what actually. Yeah? Not good. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> okay. Because some patient will be allergic to bunga. ya. Yeah? Hmm. So jangan tersinggung dah kalau uh, jurawat tak kasih bawa bunga ya. So these are the uh, these are the things little little things that we can do to help patients. Next anxiety, I think anxiety benda yang I repeat semalam lah. Okay, uh, perawatan untuk mengurangkan keresahan ini agak universal lah sebenarnya ya, agak universal ya. Yeah? So you can read this on your own. But I think I think the most important the way I observe uh, kit. Uh, is to communicate, talk to patient. You need to talk to them, right? Uh, attend to them. Sebab so, kadang, because saya pernah jadi pesakit juga. Okay, masa saya melahirkan anak, saya jadi pesakit. Masa anak saya masuk work, saya pun jadi pesakit. Mak pesakit. Eh? Yeah? Sebab saya, masa itu, I, my, 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 one of my son has a childhood asthma. So, you can imagine how anxious it is, eh? lonely there. Jurawat, muka jurawat tak nampak. Menghilang, lepas itu datang sekejap, ambil, ambil. Ambil temperature, ambil BP, terus menghilang. Satu patah, satu patah perkataan pun tak keluar. Okay. Can you imagine how, 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 how anxious a person can be? Ya, yeah? uh, dah lah anxious tentang dia punya condition and feel so isolated and terima jurawat yang 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 tak mesra. Ya, yeah? so I think communication really helps a lot. Ya, yeah? talk to your patient, talk less among yourself, talk more to the patient. Because I find some nurses, ah, they chit chat, chit chat, chit chat among themselves, but they don't spend enough time to chit chat with the patient. Sometimes patients really appreciate, you know, a short chit chat with them. Nah? Okay, make sure their their needs are, are, are attended lah. When their needs are attended, okay, that give them an assurance. Yeah. Okay, inform them of their progress, give the opportunity to ask. So these are universal, you know, apply for for all patient that is hospitalized in the ward. Okay, because definitely is um, it's really menakutkan ya yeah, to 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 not I mean it's really scary you know for for a person who couldn't breathe properly it's a scary experience yeah? all right next one will be the uh, a major part of the uh, should I say uh, care of patient is the health education 
So you'll find that most of the time, patient might not have sufficient knowledge on how to manage. So there's a whole lot of education, you know. I think dalam satu jam ni, kan, eh, banyak nak cerita lah. Dah pukul 12, eh, dah pukul 11, ya. Eh. Kat sana pukul 11, di sini pukul 12. So you can read all that, okay. So normally I will send my students to the asthma clinic, you know, there is, we have, we have an asthma nurse, we have also COPD nurse. These are nurse of specialized trained to really guide the patient how to uh, manage their condition. So very complex. Yeah? So for you, if you can refer them to the nurse specialist dealing with this condition, that will be excellent. Other than that, so you can you can also go to the website and, and sort of like read all the materials so you can share what you have learned to the patient. You can also, you know, if those patients are educated, yeah, you can also give the link to them because there are a lot of resources there. Cuma masalah, yeah? a lot of resources in English. No? Yeah. So maybe, you know, one part is uh, for those who are interested in the research, you can develop a, a, a website information that is using local language, okay, Bahasa Indonesia, to benefit those patients eh, who, who do not really understand other languages except their own mother tongue. Okay, so you can read all this thing on your own, right? A lot of things that you need to talk about. Okay, banyak ni, complex sebenarnya. Eh? So how education is hakiki kita, homa. Maybe I just highlight a few unique ones. Eh? Okay, tell them about the... Uh, now most of the time, uh, a lot of patients, kadang-kadang uh, dia tak comply to the inhaler though. Okay, they don't want to take inhale, especially the corticosteroid. You see what happened is, uh, you will find that, you know, very common that the doctor prescribed inhaler corticosteroid, that they will step up. It has this concept of stepping up and stepping down. So the muscle, they uncontrolled, the asthma is uncontrolled, they will step up treatment. But when it is well controlled, they step down the ubat. Okay, they kurangkan the ubat. Okay? So if you go to the website, you can learn all this thing in depth. Okay. Then teach them how to self-monitor. Teach them what is the sign or symptom of uncon when the asthma is not well controlled. Show them when they when they have one of the signs, okay, when the asthma is not well controlled, is when they wake up in the in the middle of the night because of, of some breathing difficulty. That is not good. Okay, and then when they have, uh, when they need to use their punya blue inhaler, yang warna biru tu is actually a bronchodilator. And they need to use the bronchodilators in a week. Uh, they have, and uh, there's a checklist, you know. Uh, I've forgotten, it. lama I think I can stop it. There's a checklist, you know, where uh, where we will give to the patient, okay, if kalau dia tick, 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 they will tell you, okay, your, your asthma is not control, go and see doctor. Okay. So these are the question we ask. We ask them, do you, uh, do you, how many times do you need to take your, uh, your blue inhaler? Okay. Sometimes we call it blue inhaler. Bronchodilator, patient tak faham. Okay. Ubat pelega, ubat pelega. Yang warna biru tu, okay. Ubat pelega. Uh, yang warna coklat tu, ialah ubat perawat. Uh, okay. How many times you need to take in a week? Okay. And then, uh, do you have any episode where you, uh, you terbangun kerana susah bernafas? And then, do you, uh, do, do you find, do you have res uh, respiratory difficulty even at rest? So these are the question that you ask. Okay, to know whether the asthma is well controlled or partially controlled and uncontrolled. Three cat. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, Miss. Okay. All right. So there are basically three, three. There are the three category. Kita, uh, kita classify patients asthma control. Satu uncontrolled, then partial control, then uh, well control. Okay. The website, the GINA guideline will, will give you all these things. So very interesting for you to go there and visit uh, the, the website. Yeah. And importance of medication follow up. Now corticosteroid is important. No worry. Yeah. This corticosteroid ni kadang-kadang dia dengar ulama orang buat makan corticosteroid ya dapat all this uh, uh, kata uh, side effect of corticosteroid. That one is when you take oral steroid, but this is inhale, so it's it's very the the systemic effect is very less. It's more localized effect because when you inhale, it's only disseminated to the uh, respiratory system, and you need to check whether they know how to take the inhaler properly. Uh, Okay, jangan jangan sekadar tahu 
tahu tahu pakai ya tahu pakai ya ha, tanya aja tak boleh sila encik tunjukkan cara pakai ha you tengoklah menggelabah coordination coordination tak betul okey cara hembusan cara dia sedut pun tak betul so you will find that you know the nurses test their skill in taking inhaler by asking the patient to demonstrate back Now, if they can't then we have other devices to help we have spaces yeah yeah we have spaces to to help patients you know all the devices to help patient uh, okay another one is uh, okay for those who ambil uh, ni ya eh, steroid ya eh, selepas dia ambil steroid ya eh, uh, jangan lupa remind dia gagal-gagal because when there is steroid ya eh, melekat-lekat pada mukosa dia akan menyebabkan uh, uh, mukosa uh, pertahanan mukosa berkurangan dia akan vulnerable to get infections of the mucosa so it can be diseases fungal infection of the oral mucosa eh kalau kat muka especially yang pakai mask eh, special mask tu oh, eh, cuci muka olak muka selepas ambil steroid kalau tidak nanti kan banyak penuh dengan panau muka dia ya so this are the little tips sometimes we advise patient ya yeah? so we normally ask them to do that lah so the best time will be in the morning lah okey uh, ambil ubat lepas tu pergilah gosok gigi okey alright and uh, pulmonary rehabilitation if necessary lah for those who severe can okay. of course the most important is good health well being cukup tidur ya as i say lah stress ah bila stress okay, our body usually uh, haywire tau so the inflammatory uh, mudah teruja the inflammatory response mudah teruja bila kita under stress so have good rest good health okay you are what you eat Okay, stress management. It is an additional thing lah. You can read on your own. Uh, you can find that these are the things that we 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 do to help patients to stop smoking. And finally, last slide we'll be talking about pulmonary rehabilitation. Similar concept to cardiac rehabilitation yesterday. So we will have a form of a uh, sort of exercise, okay, education, physiotherapy to help patient to restore back to their to their life as normal as possible. Yeah, it cannot be. 100% normal but as normal as possible so that they can be independent they can still do their uh, uh, crucial functions i think that's the end of the lecture oh my goodness macam kereta api je saya ya yeah? mengejar waktu sorry lah okay that's it dan ada sakit gigi lah sorry ya yeah? aduh macam macam hari ni okay ah uh, sesi terbuka untuk soalan ada sebarang soalan daripada anak-anak uh, semua Ataupun ibu-ibu? Uh, ada doktor. Uh, Irma mau nanya, Bu. Ada buka chat deh. Nak, kalau, nak, kalau nak chat boleh, saya buka chat ya. Nak type kat chat pun boleh. Ya tadi siapa yang mau nanya? Irma mau tanya, Bu. Ya, silakan Irma. Uh, Oke, okay, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, so, I want to ask to Dr. Lee Wan Ling. Uh, yes, so, my, so, my question is, if someone has uh, asthma, is it necessary to do allergy testing or treatment? And what are the signs of asthma getting worse? Uh, that's all my question. Uh, thank you. Hey, good questions. Okay, now uh, allergic testing is sometimes uh, uh, it all depends on you ada duit ke tak ada duit, no? Because ka kalau sebab muji allergic ni mahal ni, no? Tapi it will be good because if you able to identify apa yang trigger you, then you can avoid it. If I'm that you can, there's a skin test, you know. Sometimes there's a skin test to know apa maka, apa yang allergy, makanan apa yang allergy. That be good, but most of the time maha. So you will find that most of the time you will ask patients to keep a diary. We will teach them. Okay, every time when you rasa macam tak betul susah nafas, yeah, the symptom alahan, keep a diary. Yeah, okay. bila selalu yang most of the time patient asma ni dia juga alah a lot a lot of things so alah alah kepada seafood lah, alah kepada kerang lah. Yeah, hmm. So every time you will ask them to keep a history, you know. Uh, you will find that a lot of these people, they allergy lah, they, they actually hypersensitivity punya group of people. So they will keep diary lah, okay. 
bila saya makan udang okey saya terasa macam uh, macam rasa uh, macam rasa bengkak bibir contoh ya uh, ataupun keluar ruam so they they will they will identify themselves usually that, that uh, so i don't find it is in other words it is not a standard treatment to go for allergy test for the patient okay it's not a standard it's not a, a, a recommended effort right now what the sign of worsening is to, to know the sign of worsening the the, the uh, you find that the the most sensitive cardinal sign would be when they terbangun waktu malam jadi tidur-tidur tiba terbangun waktu malam kerana sedikit susah nafas. Dia terbangun atau terjaga, so dia bernafas sikit. Okay, after dia dah okey, dia tidur balik. Okay, this are the sign. Okay? And then dia batuk. Dia batuk, dia kerap batuk. Lah. Nah, dia kerap batuk. So that's another sign that the asthma is already out of control already. Okay? Batuk. Okay? Mungkin ada kahak, mungkin tak ada kahak. Dia batuk kerap. Ini dia cough, 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 you know? And then the cough is quite, uh, can be bothersome. Right? And then sometimes when they when they start get okay, yeah, then the next part is when they start to have, feel a bit I mean the patient will know they rasa macam they need to ambil inhaler so they rasa macam ketak dada dia ambil inhaler lepas tu okey okey balik now dalam ya yeah, dalam sebulan i think dalam sebulan uh, seminggu dia kena ambil lebih daripada dua kali ya yeah. it's not a good sign hmm. the blue one Yeah, the blue inhaler because the blue one is actually ubat pelega it's not every time they must take one you know only usually we advise them to take when they when they have difficulty in breathing the brown one is the ubat perawat like that one memang regular maybe the doctor prescribe take once every day like that is ubat pelega lain eh, as uh, perawat bukan pelega perawat the brown inhaler Sometimes they also have. Now you see a lot of devices. Eh? It will come in powder form, turbo inhaler, dis inhaler. Okay? But they are basically combination of both. Eh? They find that there is best for synergy effect. That that medicine have a combination of steroid with long acting beta agonist, but of lower dose. Uh, but the the clear cut, the sabutamol, eh? the blue inhaler, eh? the the ventolin, eh? that is really actually a first aid sebenarnya. Okay, when they are having difficulty breathing, then you breathe that one. Because it's very fast. It will cause bronchodilatation and then the, 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 the shortness of breath will alleviate. Yeah, lega. Uh, maybe I can show you. Okay. I hope you go and visit the GINA guideline. That will be very interesting materials then. Okay. All right. So tell now you I mean among you sir, among your friends you might know somebody is actually asthma so tell them that actually asthma can be controlled okay they be controlled and then uh, some of them childhood asthma they will overcome it as what happened is uh, ke immune system ke immune badan semakin matang some of them uh, were the, the system immune semakin matang so they they uh, alahan tu semakin berkurang so you find that a lot of them in childhood asthma bila dia dah dewasa is It just gone. They don't need any more of those medicine. Okay, they just gone. Okay, but some of them will have to continue. And then the thing is, if they don't control their asthma, okay, they will develop chronic asthma. And when they develop chronic asthma, it become a big problem. It become it become similar. You know, uh, chronic asthma occur is when there is a permanent damage to the airway. Hmm, keradangan yang Uh, berulang-ulang, 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 bertahun-tahun, berulang-ulang keradangan ini. Lama-lama tisu pun akan rosak dan membentuk parut. Uh, when become chronic asthma, that is another huge problem. So we do not want that to happen. So when, usually when they're children, we make sure that we teach them uh, how to control the asthma. When they control the asthma, there is no keradangan. Okay? Tidak ada keradangan pada saluran pernafasan. So they'll be able to lead a very healthy life. Okay, I hope I answer your questions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, doctor. Uh, I, I You're welcome. Any more? Uh, I think I go too fast. Eh? So, I'm going to jump. I'm going to jump. Yeah, doctor. <laughs> Ada lagi yang mau bertanya? 
Bagaimana mahasiswa yang lain? Bagaimana? Hanifah mungkin ada yang ingin ditanyakan? Okay. Boleh menggunakan bahasa Indonesia, boleh menggunakan ya, bahasa Inggris. Benar sekali. Mungkin mereka takut dokter untuk ber, uh, berbahasa Inggris. Ada juga yang sudah berani berbahasa Inggris. Eh, bagus. Bahasa Indonesia saja boleh. Hmm. Saya amat menggalakkan anak-anak semua cuba berbahasa Inggris. Nah, Tunggal langkang tak apa, tapi ah, biasa. Campur-campur, uh, campur-campur ya. Campur-campur, campur-campur lama-lama, campur-campur dia dia build confidence ah, uh, and then and then they get better. Uh. Ya, ya benar. Bagaimana uh. yang lain ada yang mau bertanya lagi? Penat lah, masih penat. <laughs> Tapi tak apa, kalau ada persoalan, boleh email saya. Yeah, okay. yeah. Ibu Nila ada email. Yeah. Ibu Nila boleh kemukakan soalan kepada saya. Saya akan cuba yeah. saya untuk menjawab. Uh, benar. Yeah. Jadi begini, saya, begini ya mahasiswa. Hmm. Nanti bagi yang masih ada pertanyaan, mungkin tiba-tiba uh, nanti timbul pertanyaannya dokter ya. Timbul, lalu bisa nanti yeah. melalui di menghubungi Prodi atau nanti menghubungi Bu Nila, nanti kita email bersama dokternya. Nanti kita uh, berbalas email ya dokter. Ya. Uh, mungkin sebelum kita mengakhiri, boleh kita... Uh, uh, ada pertanyaan lagi? Sekali lagi Bu, tanya. Ada yang mau ditanya lagi? Tukar kedokan, nampak cerah sikit. Tadi gelap sebab... <laughs> Tengkap kat belakang. So, oh, bila tengkap kat belakang saya, so muka nampak gelap. Oh, ya. Yeah. Jadi, tengkap kat depan saya. Ha, yang belakang ni ialah virtual punya background lah, tipu punya background. Sebab <laughs> saya punya tempat. Pejabat saya tak ada apa-apa yang menarik. Jadi, kita pakai background ya, doktor ya. Ya, bagaimana ha, masih suara? Dah <laughs> Bagaimana ada yang mau bertanya lagi? Uh, mohon semuanya silakan ayo kita mengaktifkan kamera mungkin sambil menunggu pertanyaan kita akan mengambil uh, ini foto foto ya dokter ya uh, sebelum kita sambil menunggu pertanyaan dari teman-temannya eh, senyum ya sebentar saya ambil satu dua tiga senyum senyum sebentar karena akan di Nanti akan kita share seperti itu. Eh, share ya, gambar-gambar nih buat kenangan-kenangan saya. Iya, yeah. iya, yeah, benar, dokter. Oke, okay, sebentar, saya inikan lagi. Tadi ada kesalahan. Oke, okay, senyum lagi satu, dua, tiga. Senyum lagi. Ya, ini ada ini berkali-kali ya karena ada lebar. Uh, di sini ada empat page. Ini nggak bisa langsung semuanya. Saya ambil ya. Oke, okay, sebentar lagi satu yang terakhir. Oke, okay. bagaimana masih ada yang mau ditanyakan lagi, mumpung? Uh, kalian bisa bertemu dengan dokter uh, Lia, dokter ya, karena uh, ini uh, harus kalau bertemu langsung harus ke Malaysia ya, dokter ya. Nah, di sini langsung bisa bertanya dengan dokter. Ayah, Marila. <laughs> Jadi bisa bertemu di sini. Mungkin ada yang mau ditanya lagi. Bagaimana Almadila Tasya, Fadila Islami? Mumpung masih ada dokternya, kalau tidak ada nanti bisa uh, melalui uh, ke ibu boleh ya, ke Prodi boleh, ke Bunila boleh, uh, atau nanti uh, uh, langsung ke bagian Airo juga boleh. Oke okay, baiklah dokter, mungkin uh, mahasiswanya sudah <laughs> sudah lah dan kebetulan memang ada beberapa perkuliahan yang online lainnya juga. 
Jadi uh, ada beberapa perkuliahan juga yang akan di Ya benar, saya uh, paham. Lakukan. Ya. <laughs> Seperti itu tadi ada juga yang baru masuk dokter karena memang sebelumnya ada perkuliahan juga jadi setelah perkuliahan kita langsung masuk bertemu dengan dokter lagi seperti hmm. itu ya nah, dokter Bisa. terima kasih terima semoga kasih nanti, ya semoga suatu hari terima kasih karena kita... memberi peluang untuk ya, kami berkongsi sama... pengalaman berkongsi ilmu ya ya dokter Coba lagi ya iya ya, dapat salam Bye. dari uh, kak ibu Alini yang kebetulan sekarang juga sedang berada di ruangan sedang uh, ada dokumen yang sedang disiapkan uh -huh. semoga nanti suatu hari dokter bisa bermain uh, main ke uh, Universitas Palawan di Bangkinang dan kami juga bisa menemui yeah. dokter di sana <laughs> saya ingin ke sana <laughs> <laughs> ya ditunggu ya dokter okay. ya nanti kita berhubungan sama Bu Nila nanti Bu Nila yang uh, memfasilitasi Bye. mungkin dokter ya uh, baiklah Uh, mungkin cukup sekian. Mungkin dokter ada yang ingin disampaikan lagi, dokter? Ada mungkin uh, sesuatu yang ingin disampaikan pesan untuk mahasiswa kami supaya menjadi semangat lagi berbahasa Inggris atau uh, lain uh, sebagainya? Bagaimana, dokter? Halo dokter, masih uh, masih bisa ini saya ya dengar suara saya dokter? Dengar, dengar. Ya, ya. dengar. Mungkin ada sesuatu ya. supaya uh, mahasiswa perawat kami ini bisa menjadi seorang dokter li gitu dokter untuk mahasiswa kami. Uh, sesuatu yang bisa dokter boleh. sampaikan. Tentu boleh. Tentu boleh. Rajinlah belajar. Ya, rajin belajar. Jadilah yang berjiwa, okay, dan cintakan ilmu pasti satu hari akan sampai ke puncak ya, puncak akademi. Tapi bukan semua, ya, bukan semua pada pandangan saya bukan semua yang uh, 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 perlu berkhidmat dalam bidang pendidikan. Kita masih memerlukan jurawat yang uh, yang bertugas di barisan hadapan di klinik. So ada habis. Uh, dah habis uh, pengajian then you will know uh, apa apakah yang apa kata your career pathway sama you nak masuk akademia ataupun you nak clinical because clinical pun memang uh, ada dia punya uh, career pathway dia ya yeah. yang penting kita sebagai awak kita uh, setiap kata lifelong learning lah konsep lifelong learning itu ni kita mesti lah jangan berhenti belajar selalu ya Uh, dunia medicine ni dia dia banyak berubah. So apa yang kita tahu sekarang ni di masa di tahun yang dapat ada benda-benda baru yang akan datang. So we always have to upgrade our knowledge. Okay. Hello doktor. Ya, yeah. terhenti uh. internet. Iya. <laughs> itu saja kata-kata saya. Ya, terima kasih dokter. Semoga benar-benar uh, bisa menjadi uh, uh, acuan bagi mahasiswa kami. Semoga juga nanti suatu hari uh, mahasiswa atau saya pribadi nanti juga bisa menjadi seorang dokter. Ya, amin. Kalau dokter mungkin sekian uh, pertemuan hari ini karena Miss Nila sedang ada pertemuan dokter. Jadi jadi minta uh, minta tolong saya untuk menggantikan tadi karena ada sedang ada pertemuan dengan rektor dengan pimpinan. Baiklah terima kasih Dr. Lee, ah, mohon maaf baik, jika memang uh, sangat kurang dalam fasilitasnya atau respon mahasiswa kami sangat kurang atau mungkin jaringan seperti itu Dr. Lee. Kita jumpa lagi ya. Iya, jumpa lagi. Bye. Saya mohon diri ya. Ya, Dr. Lee, terima Hai. kasih. Terima kasih. Sama-sama, Dokter. Mahasiswa boleh boleh lip ya. Hanifa nanti, aduh udah gua. Hanifa nanti kirimkan ke Ibu hasilnya ya. Bu Lucy sudah ini, Bu. Bu.
Uh, Bu Putri, maaf tadi Lucy nggak bisa bantu soalnya ada kerjaan tadi sedikit. Ya nggak apa-apa, udah, 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 udah ini oh, jadi, sih. Oh, udah mm -hmm. semuanya ya Bu. Ya makasih banyak ya Bu. Ya, sama-sama Bu. Ini berarti lip aja ya Bu ya. ya nanti saya... saya udah tunjuk satu mahasiswa yang jadi ininya Hanifa ya, kirim ke Ibu nanti Ibu format eh, forward ke Bu Nila nanti apa? Ya, Bu. Anotulen hari ini. Oke Bu, Lucy N ya Bu. Ya oke 